Look at that beautiful view. Sedona, Arizona. And everybody having a good time. We got our retreat. We lived in the house. La la. We're getting ready to go raise up our electricity, our electrical level. But we do generate electricity, just like trees, other animals, other life forms. And you could get your electrical network stronger within your body. Can you say my name? Everybody's calling. Did you say my name? <laughs> I was like, I swear I heard my name. But look at these beautiful mountains. Here goes Shana Dean. <laughs> the light beam. We're all light beams. We're all light beams. Oh, man. Look at those beautiful mountains. All this stuff going on. High energy. And we're actually getting powered up by the sun and the cosmic forces. This is no game no more. This is actually taking place and it's a fact. Oh, this is good. Ignorance is now being removed from the mind of the people. <laughs> and we generate this power. This is good. You have the ability to do it. It takes time. You work on yourself, and that's what we mean by the fullness of a holistic lifestyle. You can heal yourself. It brings forth good health, powerful energy, all through your being. This is good. La, 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 look at that power. That's the primary energy source of the planet. We live in the universe. We don't need to call on names, spirits, angels. Spirit guides, ancestors, the only thing that exists is right now. This is the power. <laughs> we got our retreat going on. Look at this. La la la. La 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 la. We're about to go do it. Once again. La, stay tuned. La la la. Look at this. All this high energy. All in the atmosphere, going through us and around us. La la la. We live in it. We were born into it. Now you're coming into the realization to work with it. The primary energy source. <laughs> Peace and blessings. See you soon. Had the best day ever. Keep generating your power. What's the biggest realization you've had in the last year? The last year? Yeah, if, if we could just condense something in like the last year, what's a big something that you had personally oh well actually this last year was the most i used the word love mm. oh yeah man. Uh -huh. Come on, man. Yeah. so this goes along on what we was going to talk about anyway just right. by asking that question Rock and roll. <laughs> we're going to talk about love compassion yes and uh mercy because yeah, we people use those words all the time but have you ever gave it a definition on what you think it is so that's why on the journey, there was a last, there was a time I even condemned the word love. Yeah, I did. Because I said, when people use it, it's like a water fountain. You only love somebody until they don't do what you expect them to do. Mm. You can cut it off like a water fountain. So that's why I was in that confusion, mm. even though I was still dealing on the path. Mm. But over the last year, wow. I had to get the right definition to change my perception. And what it was is when I found, uh, as I was dealing with the energies, teaching it. But I've just found out that the energy is love. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Because it, it's the one that don't judge you and it don't cut itself off. Right. If anything, you cut it off. Yes. That's wild. And then I found a manuscript in India and it's telling you the breath in process to immortality. Now, of course, when I saw it, I said, that's it. That's what I've been teaching. But notice I've been teaching that before I even got a hold of the manual. That was just confirming it. But then they associated the love energy. That's what they called it. And then they called it the life force energy, which is prana. That is the love energy. That's it, man. So our natural essence is love. Mm -hmm. Is love. That's, that's why you can pick it up. Fueling us. So what's prana? We are prana. Right. We're feeding ourselves. With ourselves. With ourselves. With yourselves. When we go out in nature, we're feeding ourselves. Self-sustaining. Oh, this is good, ain't it? Mm. So that's why that, what you just asked me, what realization did I have to that, the last year? That's what love is. <laughs> wow. Oh, man. And then that made me really appreciate it. I'm, getting, I'm living in love. Yeah. Wow. 
This is good. Wow. But now this is where it gets good. We use love and compassion interchangeably. But notice that, say when you go to the vegan diet, don't they call it the, compa the compassion diet? Mm -hmm. They don't call it the love diet. They call it the compassion diet for a reason. Even though we use that word love and compassion interchangeably. Mm -hmm. They're two different things. Oh man, how could I do this? Now what usually messes up some people I see where they're struggling, they want to show love to others. But you really don't have to show love to others. Listen at this. What? Ellie Tom, what you saying? No, you show others compassion. Because hmm. compassion is something. The reason why you got compassion to help that person, you can feel hmm. what you can feel their condition. Hmm. I hope this makes sense. Hmm. That's why you're st sticking in. That's why we say not eating animals is the compassion diet. And you're blaming it on their being tortured brutally. They didn't tell you that. You can see it. You felt it. So that's why it's the compassion diet, not the love diet. You're showing them compassion. So you're doing the same to other humans. Mm -hmm. But the love energy, when you're dealing with the light, oh, let, let, let me get into this. This is where we mess up at. Say, for instance, that there's somebody. I'm going to break it down further so we can dig. Don't believe me either. We're going to talk about it. <laughs> Say if somebody knew you so much that they knew your favorite food, they knew your favorite music, you came home, they had everything set up just right. The bath water set for you just the right temperature, your favorite drink, your favorite pajamas to go to bed, <laughs> or if you ain't want nothing on at all, they know you. So they sit there and set everything up just right. But since they set that up for you, you feel so guilty because you didn't do nothing for them. You feel you need to do something. Uh-huh. You feel So what you do instead of enjoying the situation they gave you, you start giving the situation away. And they didn't do it for that. Right. Now it's an insult to them. That was an insult. In a way, if it was another being, right. but that's what the love energy is coming, saying. It loves you because it set everything up for you. Oh, wow. It ain't tell you to get away, but you feel it so guilty. I got to prove and show that I love others. You don't. Wow. We have to know that we need to open to receiving because everybody else is open to receiving. And when you enjoy on what you receive, that's the best teacher. That's how you're showing everybody. You don't even know what's wrong with them. Wow. The love energy know what's wrong with them. But you mess it up by interfering, thinking you're showing them love and they rejected it. No, they didn't. You didn't even know what their favorite food was. You're telling them what not to eat. That's wild, ain't it? Let's leave them alone. <laughs> <laughs> the best teacher is for you to live it. And they're showing them they could do it too. That's compassion. So is that why fear maybe is the opposite of love? Because basically, if you're trying to show love for someone, you're basically fearing that they're not okay as is. Right. And there's a fear happening in you. Right. To prove that what you're doing is right. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yes. And sometimes you use it as an ego like you're ahead of somebody. Oh, guess what? I, I eat all salads. Well, a rabbit could do that. <laughs> Big deal. <laughs> it's an ego thing. Yeah. yeah. And, that, and I had to break people down. I said, well, since you're on that diet doing this and this and this, why is that person in better health than you are? Mm. You know, you try to bring them back to earth, not try to stop it. You're taking it, you're using something as a weapon, and you don't even know what it is. That's not love. That's something else. Whoa. Mm. You don't know what it is. But you can give compassion. And then that brings you back down to earth. I'm going to go get that person some clothes because their clothes is dirty and I know they didn't have nothing else that they got taken from them. 
I'd like to say as a, uh, you know, because I do Reiki for a living, and when I work over people's bodies, over their energy fields, they're expressing love, their energy feels one way, but when they express compassion for others, it totally opens and expands the heart chakra. Mm. So there's a bigger energetic response and opening with compassion versus love, and I think it might be because a lot of people confuse what love really is. Right. Like human love. But compassion, pretty much people universally know what that is. They can really tune into it. Mm. But right. if you can connect with unconditional compassion mm. for others, mm. it will completely open and expand and clear your heart space. Mm. You, well, oh, said. Wow. well said. Well said. See, look, look at what she said. It's basically how that de definition is. Yes. Because love could be different for everybody on what we think it is. Mm. No, it's an awesome energy. But what is your definition of it? But if you work with the compassion, kind of that's universal and grounded. It's more grounded. And you could be more real at your approach. And it takes you out of yourself. Yeah. And it takes you out of yourself. It moves you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. So yeah. now mercy. Oh. It animates, right? Yes, it does. It moves yeah, you. Yeah. It moves yeah. you. Yeah. Love is who we are. Compassion is what we express. Yeah. Or, or, yeah. Oh, I don't know if you so oh, mercy. Man. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Now that word mercy, and mercy is a thing that a lot of people don't use. A lot of people don't use, but they used to use it a lot once upon a time. Yeah. But mercy is a deep one because, all right, here we go now. In the scriptures, they had what you called the mercy seat. Only the priest could sit there. He had to be the intervention for the higher forces and the people. Right. And he even had to have a rope tied on him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because if, if he wasn't a pure vessel to sit there, yep. they had to pull him out. Cause, you know, because he died. Yeah. He wasn't a pure vessel to sit there. You got to be a certain way. It took a lot of preparation. It took a lot of preparation to be able to sit in the mercy seat. So if he did, wasn't truly purged to sit in that seat, and got struck down, they had to pull him out by the rope. Yep. Now that should tell you something right there. Let's let's bring it down to earth on what we talk about the breath and message. Since we've been talking about electricity, electromagnetic field, and you're building it up. And this is dealing with the technology. Now this is going to make sense. When I was in the Navy working in a radio shack, it had all these electronics. It had a rubber mat and floor, just in case so you won't get electrocuted. And it had ropes all over the place, hanging up. The ropes was for if somebody got electrocuted to a piece of the equipment. We had to take the rope and pull them off. If you try to grab them, you're going to get electrocuted. So you use the rope to pull them. So that's telling you right there in ancient times, that was a technology. They had a rope around the priest because if they were to go try to grab them, they would have got electrocuted. But what? Spirit. What is spirit? Electricity. <laughs> yeah. Don't that say it? He had a, the, the magnetic field in there was so great. The person in there better get his body together to be able to handle that energy. Right. Wow. Let's make a sense now, ain't it? Uh oh. The integrity of the vessel had to be there. Right. Yeah. The integrity of the vessel had to be there. So the mercy seat, since a beam got that much power to sit on that seat, and he's the intervention for everybody else, because the higher frequencies, it don't really understand. Why are you acting the way you acting? <laughs> yeah. And it don't care. <laughs> Why won't it just come to me for a belief? First of all, it ain't even judging you, but what, it ain't even thinking about coming there. Why? What are you talking about? You up here crying, praying. It ain't coming to you. It don't know. But what we do know, you got the potential to connect with it. It's, it's looking at you like, what are you talking about? We are the same thing. Uh-oh. So when you get a chance to sit in a mercy seat and show mercy, you don't got to understand where a person's coming from. Mm. They're God just like you. You don't understand it. You really don't. Mm. You don't have to. Sort of like Superman. He get his energy from the sun. He living in a body. He don't know how your body felt. He don't even know what you're doing, what you're doing. He don't know your experiences. So why is he going to debate with you 
over a vegan diet versus another diet. He don't know. He ain't even eating. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's the mercy seat. So you showing people mercy because you know they, they're weaker, not on an arrogance thing, because that's what they want to be. So you're showing them mercy. Some debates that you don't even get into. You just walk away. You're a 